Welcome back to another part in the MVVM Jetpack Compose course for beginners. In this video, we are gonna work on two things. Number one is I'm gonna show you how to build a circular indeterminate progress bar and how to show that while something is happening in the background. So like while something is loading. In our case, that means getting something from the API. So let me just quickly show you what that's gonna look like. So if I was to click on any of these categories, notice that circular progress bar in the middle. I'll click it again. There's that circular progress bar again. Note that we are not going to be building this kind of dotted progress bar in this video. We're gonna do that in a later video. And the second thing that we're going to work on is we're going to fix a problem that currently exists when we perform a search. So here's the current version of the application. Notice that when I was to, or when I'm to scroll down these list results, if I then search another, you know, using another search query, another category, doesn't matter. Notice that the list position isn't reset. So I have to scroll up to the top of the list to get to the top of that query. So that shouldn't happen. When I perform a new search, it should automatically scroll to the very top. Those are the two things that we're going to work on in this video so let's go get started first you might notice that it looks a little bit different in my android studio and that's because i changed the configuration a little bit i got a suggestion from somebody watching on youtube that i should click compact middle packages that uh, compacts any packages that aren't actually open so a nice little tip Thanks for whoever suggested that. I forgot to, I forgot your name, but thank you anyway. Also, I switched to the Android view. Personally, I like the project view because you can see your testing and Android test directories, but this is a beginner project, so it's probably better for you guys just to see the Android view. So thanks for the tip again, and I will be using that view from now on. Now let's build that progress bar. So we're gonna go into our components package, right click and create a new Kotlin file. And this is gonna be called circular indeterminate progress bar. I know it's a long name, but it's descriptive. It tells you exactly what this thing is gonna be. So it's a circular progress bar that spins forever, essentially. That's what indeterminate means. Now I'm gonna give you guys lots of room to give you a better view and let's build this composable. So of course we need to annotate this with composable because that's what this thing is. Now circular indeterminate progress bar. I know that's a mouthful, but again, it's very meaningful because it's a progress bar that spins forever. So that's why we have indeterminate up there. Now, the only argument that we need is gonna be called is displayed, and that's going to be a Boolean. So should this be displayed, yes or no? That's essentially all this means. So first of all, if is displayed, then of course we would display it, and there's gonna be no else case because we don't wanna display anything if this Boolean is false. So now, how do we want to align this thing in our app? Well, we want it to be in the middle and kind of down a little bit from the top. So notice it's kind of down, I don't know, about, I'd say about 30%-ish from the top, maybe less, maybe 2% from this right here. So we want to you know, center it horizontally and bring it down from the top just a little bit. Now there's a lot of ways you could do this. The way that I'm gonna show you in this video is by far the simplest way. And in the next video, we're gonna work on constraint layout. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with constraint layout and show you a bunch of different examples using constraint layout. Let's use a row composable. And inside this row, I'll add a modifier. So modifier.fill maximum width. We wanna make sure that we fill the maximum amount of width possible. That's how we're gonna align it to the middle so that that's why this row has to be max width. Now I'm gonna add some padding. So padding and just do 20 DP. That's gonna bring it down from the top. So like I said, if we go back to the finished version of the app here, it's kind of down from the top a little bit. That's about probably 50 DP, 40 DP, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you know, padding you choose to add here, it really isn't that important. I'm gonna use 20 just to bring it down from the top a little bit. Whatever you think looks best here. You can do more if you want. If you wanna do 50, again, doesn't matter. Now this is the most important thing, horizontal arrangement. We went over this in one of the earlier videos in the course, using horizontal arrangement and vertical arrangement. We can use those things inside rows and columns to center composables. So because we're in a row, we have access to horizontal arrangement and that's going to center any of the children in the row, or sorry, it's going to align any of the children in the row into the center. Now we're gonna use a composable called a circular progress indicator. This is a pre-built composable that that's available to us. So you could just add it like this or you can customize it. The only customization I'm gonna add is I'm gonna add a color attribute. So I'm gonna do materialtheme.colors.primary. 
need to get that import dot this should be lowercase dot primary and that's going to give it the purple color because currently in our application we haven't changed the theme at all so the primary color color i believe is purple yes so that's the primary color and again we're going to be customizing the theme later in this course so that is our uh, circular indeterminate progress bar we have it you know aligned to the center it's going to be down about 50 dp from the top now how do we use this thing well, first, let's just add this to our recipe list fragment just so we can see it. So let's go and I don't know, I'll just put it like right here just randomly so that we can just see it. So circular, circular, uh, indeterminate, whoops, circular, indeterminate progress bar and pass true for is displayed. And that's just going to, you know, put it between the search bar and the lazy column. Now I'm going to run this just so we can see it. And then we're going to work on, you know, how to show loading while we're doing a request, how to hide the loading when we're done the request. So there we go. We have the app launched and there's our circular indeterminate progress bar that's going to spin forever, spin into infinity. So now the next thing is, how do we get this to show, you know, only when we are doing a search and then be hidden when we are done doing that search? Now, there's a lot of ways to do this, but the recommended way that you'll find in the Android documentation or any of my samples, any of my code samples, is we want to add a variable to our view model and observe that variable. And it will, you know, denote whether we are loading or whether we are not loading. So let's create that variable. We'll call it loading and just set it equal to a new mutable state object and set that equal to false because we obviously don't want to be loading just to start off. We only want to be loading while we're doing a request. So now when do we want to load? Well, like I said, we want to load when we're doing a request. So inside the new search function, I'm going to go inside view model scope dot launch and I'm going to write loading dot value equals true. So as soon as this function gets called, we're going to show that loading. And then when we're done, when we've got the result, so down below here, I'm going to do loading dot value and set that equal to false. Now this request is going to be so fast that you probably will barely see the loading animation. So what we'll do is we'll add a delay here of, I don't know, let's add a delay of like you know, 5,000 or maybe 2,000 milliseconds, that's really emphasized. That way we can at least see that progress bar visible for two seconds before the request is even, even executed. This will kind of like simulate a network delay, I guess you could say. So now let's go into recipe list fragment and create that new variable that we just created in the view model. So value loading equals view model model dot loading dot value just like we've done with the other values in our view model when we're going to observe them like the query the recipes the selected category all the same thing here we're playing the same game now we have this boolean available to us so how can we use this well simply we could obviously just do you know loading here i know this isn't going to look like what we want it to look like yet but let's just see if it's working so let's just run the app and see if Yes, it's displayed while it's loading and then it gets hidden after two seconds. So there's the app launching. We expect to see the progress bar. There's that progress bar. After two seconds, it's hidden. So that is working as we expect. The thing that would be nicer though is Watch what happens when I click on a new search. So if I click on a new search, it kind of like, you know, occupies that top space. That's not really what we want. We'd rather have the progress bar overlaid over the current list items and then disappear when the search is complete. So we can do that by using a special composable called a box. So we'll come into recipe list fragment again, and I'm going to create a box composable. What is a box composable, you might ask? Well, the properties of a box composable are that all of its children will get overlaid on top top of each other. So let's add a modifier to this thing first. Let's do modifier.fill max size. So it fills the maximum width and the maximum height. Now we're gonna put our circular indeterminate progress bar and our lazy column inside. So what we've just done is I've essentially overlaid these on top of one another. And we want to move the circular indeterminate progress bar down below the lazy column because that is how compose, uh, that's how the hierarchy in compose works. So whatever is lower in the, in the composable scope, I guess you could say, in this case, the box scope, that thing is going to be on top. So if I was, you know, if I had the circular indeterminate progress bar and I put it here, that would mean that the lazy column would be on top of this. So we'd never see this. That would never get shown. 
But if I put this down at the bottom, that means that this has, uh, I guess, a uh, higher priority than the lazy column. So this will overlay on top of the lazy column. Now, the last thing we're gonna do in this video is fix the problem that I outlined at the beginning. So remember, if I was to scroll here and then make a new query, Notice that the list position isn't scrolled to the top. So I have to scroll the top. That should not happen. When I query something, it should scroll to the top when that query is complete. So we need to fix that. So let's go into recipe list view model and I'm going to create two new functions. One function will be private. Actually, both of them will be private. The first one's gonna be clear selected, selected category. It will take nothing. It will return nothing. I just wanna do selected category dot value equals null. So remember, we're keeping track of whatever category is clicked in the toolbar. So whenever I click here, you know, soup becomes the selected category beef becomes a selected category and so on and so on. Well, if I make a new search, I want to clear whatever the current selected category is. Because if I was to search you know, my own custom thing, whatever it is, I wanna make sure that this gets cleared. So we need a function to clear that selected category. Next, I need a function for resetting the search state. So reset search state, I'll call it. It will also take nothing and return nothing. Now I wanna do two things here. I wanna set the recipe list to nothing, to an empty list. So I can use this Kotlin utility function called list of, which just creates a brand new list and set that equal to my recipes. That will reset the list so that everything is essentially cleared out. So the list, there's no list. Then we want to reset the selected category if the query does not equal that selected category. So selected category dot value, and this is an enum. So remember we need to then access the string within that enum by calling dot value on it again. If if that does not equal the query, then in that case, I want to clear the selected category. If it does equal the query, then obviously you don't want to select it because we want that to be you know, highlighted. So now where do I call this function? Well, when I start a new search. So inside new search, you know, let's show the loaning and then let's call research reset search state and that will you know clear the list it's going to reset things the list will get scrolled to the top and get ready for those new results all right so that should be good let's run it and take a look so there's the app launching there we get that circular progress bar there's our list results all right let's check to see if the progress bar is going to be showing when i make a new query so if i click on soup yes that gets shown the list gets cleared that all looks good now, what if I scroll and I select something new? So let's select chicken, list gets cleared. There we have our new list and everything is good to go. Now, of course, we still have a long way to go with our app. You know, if we take a look at the finished version of the app, there's a lot more animations here than just the loading progress bar. If I click on a new query, we have this you know, horizontal dotted progress bar that's kind of going. Also, we have that shimmer animation. I really like that shimmer animation. It shows kind of that gray color pulling down. That's all stuff we're gonna be working on later. For now, in the next video, we're gonna work on constraint layout. So if you've been around Android development for any amount of time, I'm sure you've heard of this thing called constraint layout. It was the recommended way to build your layouts using XML, especially if they were complex layouts because uh, nesting linear layouts, nesting relative layouts, this was, uh, it had a lot of overhead, or at least that's what the Android developers at Google told us. So typically nesting layouts was not a good idea. You were gonna use constraint layout. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use constraint layout using Jetpack Compose. And before you go anywhere, make sure to leave your engagement. Go down there, engage the ion drives, leave me an engagement ring, leave me some kind of creative engagement, and also leave a like. Don't forget that like. I'll see you guys in that next video for uh, constraint layout with Jetpack Compose. Hey, what are you still doing here? The video is over. Well, since you're still here, I guess I'll show you the best Android courses that exist on the planet. I got all kinds of high quality courses. If you scroll on down on the homepage, there's the Jetpack Compose one that you're watching right now. There's that course. We have MVI architecture. If you've ever been curious about that, we have my classic powerful Android apps with Jetpack architecture. This shows you everything from, uh, well, the focus on this one is pretty much database caching. Caching. We get data from a real API, we cache it, we uh, basically design an app to work when there's no network connection. That is what this project is all about. We have some UI testing, another UI testing, Hilt, which uh, we actually went over in this course. We got clean architecture. This one's probably the best, this is definitely the best course on my website. If you are a professional or you are looking to get into the industry, the skills that you learn in this course are absolutely fundamental. This will give you a big edge 
in any job environment, whether you're applying or you're already at a job and you want to just improve your skills, this is a really, really, really high quality course. It's hard. Your, your brain might explode while watching it, but you will learn a lot. You'll learn a lot of really, really fundamental skills. You know, anything from getting data from the network, caching data, designing different layers, abstracting out the different layers so that you can write unit tests, uh, espresso tests, so UI tests, dagger, navigation components, everything. It's beautiful. Definitely this is the best course on the website.